We are at one of Nashville's smallest farms with Dakota Jernigan. This is Freya Farms. Thank you for having us out today and tell us a little bit about your operation. Yeah, here. so we are a no-till, small, intensive agriculture farm. Um, so this farm was, was all made with a tarp to kill off the grass, then cardboard, then lots of compost, lots of wood chips. Uh -huh. um, we got all the wood chips for free or low cost, and we're sitting on about 12,000 square feet. So you grow a wide variety of things here, obviously, because I've got squash down here to my right yep. uh, that are just coming on for the summer. And you've then cropped in like okra over a spring lettuce crop? Yep, we've got some lettuce here. Um, just trialing that out. Uh huh. Um, there are some little cucumber beetles getting on the on the okra, and we were only we were trying to interplant okra with squash, um, but the farm we were getting these from gave us a whole lot of okra. So now <laughs> gotcha. we have two beds. Of now okra. you have two beds of okra. Um, we also have an understory of lettuce under this okra crop. Yeah. Just doing some experiments with polycultures. And then over on the string you've got cucumbers yeah these are salt and pepper cucumbers so a little small white cucumbers uh -huh. and then there's watermelon radish as an understory as well as nasturtiums as an understory too all right so how long have you guys been here we've been here we moved in march of 2019 mm -hmm. and then about a week later we had our first tarp laid out gotcha so, so we just wasted no two years time. two years a hair over two years yeah and you've already gotten to this level of production with everything yeah it's over 200 cubic yards of materials that we've moved mm -hmm. onto this wow a lot of dump truck loads right so you've really built that soil up deep for and, sure and rich to get all of these crops to grow so well all the beds we started off with eight inches of compost and about five inches of wood chips mm -hmm. and we've noticed that each year the soil will eat most of those wood chips wow so they decompose in that five inches of wood chips decomposes in about a year's time yeah. Amazing. And then we do have to replace the wood chips and we put less compost on the bed as we go. Mm -hmm. We usually don't put any extra compost right. on the bed when we flip. And then what about watering all of this, you know, all these crops efficiently? What's the, what have you found is the best way for you guys to manage that? Our first year was extremely inefficient. We did about three hours to four hours a day of hand, hand watering, watering with the hose. Yep. Um, and since then, we've last year in the middle of the year, we put in overhead sprinklers, which are lifesavers. Yeah. Um, they're little wobblers, they're very inexpensive. We kind of just designed a little system and we put them on timers as well. So at six o'clock in the morning, they're turning on. Right. It doesn't matter if we're here, asleep, and in. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then our drip irrigation is um, manual uh -huh. and we may only turn that on once a week. This looks like a pretty healthy crop of carrots that you have going here and you need pretty good deep soil to grow good carrots so Definitely. that's a sign that you've obviously done a good job on soil prep <laughs> uh, in this in this location. Are there good carrots under there? Definitely. Some, sometimes they may hit a rock right. and bend but they come out very easy so like these two hit a rock right? because this is no-till, but if it can dodge a rock, and you get some, it's a little bit of split going on there. But most of these carrots will come out pretty well. Right, and it doesn't matter that they hit a rock and split, they're still perfectly edible. Yeah, yeah. So and if, they might not be quite as pretty, but they're still perfectly edible. Yeah, and if they're usually on bigger carrots like this, we like to bag them, mm -hmm. and we take the tops off, we leave about two inches on the tops. Yeah. And these are more like roasting carrots. Uh -huh. And then if we can get younger carrots, then we'll bunch them with greens on. Right. And we sell those for more of a premium. Sure. If smaller. Sure. And, we'll and then you've also got a good crop of lettuce still going over here, even even kind of in the heat of the summer. I mean, we're getting into the hotter weather. Yes. And with experiments that we did last year, we were getting lettuce to germinate in August. So one thing that we're doing in order to get lettuce when it's hotter and when other farms can't seem to do it is we'll take a 90% shade cloth mm -hmm. and after we seed the bed we put 90% shade cloth directly on the bed not with hoops on it 
we weigh it down with sandbags and then we water it um, by hand about three times a day. And after about five or six days, then the, the then crop you, will germinate. Yeah. And you take off the row cover. And we had lettuce all last year. That's great. Um, even through August. And you are using some row covers here in your operation. Um, and is that primarily for insect this control? Is, yeah, this is insect netting. Uh -huh. um, we use it mostly on brassicas to control for flea beetles. Um, we don't use any sprays or anything here. So this is kind of like our form of spraying right. is using these insect nettings. They're an extremely tight weave. So like thripes and flea beetles that are very tiny, um, even like aphids can't yeah. get in. Um, they, and then they, obviously on brassicas, which would be your cabbages and broccoli and cauliflower, then that also keeps the, the uh, cabbage loopers it off does. the butterflies so you don't yes. get the little green cabbage worms and yes. that kind of thing. So this is your biochar Biochar. Wow. Explain to me what biochar is. So biochar is charcoal. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it's burnt, stable carbon material that is inoculated with compost. And every piece of charcoal has lots and lots of microscopic tubes inside of it. And I've heard people say that it basically acts as a coral reef, um, kind of like on the, just on the sterile sea floor um, so if this is in the garden, it provides a place for bacteria and microbes to live and breed. And it basically becomes like a, a life hotel in your soil. Gotcha. And then we make compost on site as well. And we mix the charcoal with our compost. So then all of your microbes that are in your compost basically have a place to live within that biochar that you're a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, we also, we feed our, we feed our soil like a fermented plant juice as well. And uh, it's two ingredients and it's, it's comfrey and brown sugar. Okay. And we let it ferment for about five days and we'll sprinkle that on our, on our beds. Onto your beds, on the soil. Yeah. And so I feel like, you know, this, it's all experimental for us. Uh, we're just trialing it this year. Um, but and it I, seems to be working for you. Yeah, and I think it'll, um, as, as our garden ages, I think it will make a difference. So, Sperry, the other half of the team at Freya Farms, tell me about these tomatoes because they're some of the prettiest I've seen. Oh, thank you. Uh, I really like to baby my tomatoes. Um, we do a single liter trellis style. Um, we also supplement our tomatoes with a calcium um, amendment that we make from eggs from our chickens. Great. Um, so I come out here and I prune these to a single liter. I also prune at the bottom. Um, once they set fruit, you can prune any leaves or any stems that come out below the fruited stem. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing is just to pick them as soon as they're ready and eat them. And then they'll just keep producing for you. Right. Uh, just as a reference point, I'll go ahead and say that we're at mid-June. So these yeah. have been in the ground maybe five weeks. Yes. And they're already four feet tall and bearing tomatoes. So yes. again, back to that soil prep that you all have done. Obviously, whatever you're doing here is working <laughs> and we've talked about that. So uh, I would encourage folks at home to follow suit. Um, and I'm guessing you'll get tomatoes probably through the fall on Definitely. most of these. Yeah. yeah. We're hoping they'll trellis all the way over and then even come back down. So mostly cherries? Mainly cherry tomatoes. Um, we've got some big boys tucked into other beds for home use. Well, and I know um, one other thing that you all do here are these what you call salad sacks. And we've looked at some greens and things during the course of, you know, visiting the farm. And tell me a little bit about that and and you know how, how you go about getting your produce out to the public sure so um, we were interested in doing a CSA program but we didn't like all the components of CSA um, such as being locked in for the whole season right um, so we call it not your mother's CSA uh, you sign up weekly okay. instead of for an entire season so you have a chance each week to sign up and you only sign up when you want that's fantastic and we mainly Love do it. this through social media okay or text message or email right um, and we try to make it a great value, typically around $20. Perfect. Because um, we want it to be accessible. Very nice. 
Well, I think we are about to get rained on, so I'm going to say thank you for letting us come out and visit with you all. We've loved visiting your little mini farm here in Nashville. Thanks. We thank you. Well, thank you very much. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.